good morning to my colleagues. Good morning, Mr. DeJoy. Um, I want to thank Chair Sessions uh, for jointly convening this. I think it's extremely important that we have a chance to talk and to follow up on a number of things that concern members of this committee with respect to the United States Postal Service. As we convene um, today's subcommittee on government operations and the workforce, I want to emphasize the latter half of that title of that name, the federal workforce. Last week, uh, Congressman Connolly of this committee, Congressman Fitzpatrick and myself co-led a resolution designating the week to honor our nation's public servants, including postal workers all across America and even in our own congressional districts. So thank you for keeping the government running. All of you who are federal workers, your hard work, your sacrifices do not go unrecognized by this committee. The former chair of this subcommittee continuously led valiant efforts to acknowledge and to appreciate our public servants and is a fierce defender and supporter of the federal workforce. Congressman Connolly, um, I just want to say to him, and I know most of you join me in saying that the attack on his staff earlier this week is weighing heavily on his mind. It's weighing heavily on the minds of all of us, whether we are Democrats or Republicans, we are all equally devastated by the senseless violence that occurs, and we're all praying for his team's speedy recoveries. Um, Mr. DeJoy, welcome back to this committee. The last time you were here, we were all masked up, as we all remember. And although we've had our differences in the past, I'm looking forward to a fruitful discussion this morning. Throughout the pandemic, Baltimore, which I represent, and much of Maryland's 7th Congressional District had the worst on-time uh, delivery in the nation by far. Now that mail delivery is improving, Maryland is experiencing one of the worst spikes in mail theft, particularly in Bethesda, Potomac, and Chevy Chase, Maryland. Moreover, the uh, U.S. Postal Inspectional Service reports that robberies of postal and uh, carriers have increased by 78%, resulting in nearly 500 robberies alone in 2022, which I find absolutely amazing. Most of us grew up in an America where postal carriers were not being robbed. Criminals who commit robberies of postal service letter carriers are specifically, we believe, looking for one thing, the so-called arrow keys, which grant access to most mailboxes across an entire zip code associated with that key. This provides bad actors with ample opportunities to steal checks and to rewrite them to withdraw excessive amounts of money from a victim's bank account and further victimizes male recipients to other potential crimes. So we're here uh, for a number of things, but we're also here about this. I'm concerned about the thousands of dollars that a single family could lose if a check is stolen and oftentimes is. And I'm concerned about the safety of our hardworking postal carriers by senseless criminals who we have to find, prosecute, uh, and send off to jail. Now to cut these costs, the Postal Service, as I understand, has increased its reliability on the private sector to deliver mail. The results, for lack of a better term, uh, have proven to be, and I don't use this lightly, uh, the results have often been fatal. In the past three years alone, third-party trucking companies have been involved in 68 fatal crashes, which have cost the lives of 79 people. We expect that the Postal Service will take its job seriously to deliver our mail securely and safely, and yet it appears that the Postal Service cannot uh, guarantee fully the safety of individuals and, in some instances, um, seems to have prioritized cost-saving strategies uh, above the safety that I've just mentioned and the people who've lost their lives through these third-party carriers. Our postal carriers must be ensured that uh, their employer, which is you, Mr. DeJoy, is implementing all strategies and focusing all resources necessary to ensure the safety of its carriers and the timeliness of the mail that they are charged with delivering. That's why Ranking Member Raskin, Congressman Conley, and myself 
uh, sent a letter to the Postmaster General requesting uh, the Postal Service's detailed response to this alarming threat that we are all facing, uh, and particularly that 600,000 postal employees uh, could possibly face who are just doing their job. And so, Mr. Chair, I would ask unanimous consent that we submit that letter for the record. Will that objection be entered in the record? Thank you, sir. I look forward, uh, Mr. DeJoy, to all of your responses today since the USPS 2021 implementation of the 10-year plan that we all had uh, a lot of discourse and, and discussion around. Uh, 54 million Americans entrusted their postal service to deliver just last year uh, their midterm election ballots securely on time uh, per first class standards, which is now uh, classified as within one to five days. And while the postal service has delivered 99% of mail-in ballots on time, uh, we're still concerned that 640,000 arrived late. And we can quibble over whether or not 99% or 100% is the goal. I just know that it's a tough job. And I want to commend the men and women that took that seriously because there was a lot of concern about whether or not those ballots would uh, be delivered as they should be. Congress has stepped in, as we all know, to address the financial challenges through the enactment of the Bipartisan Postal Reform Act of 2022, which fortunately provided significant financial release to the Postal Service and eliminated many of the archaic requirements uh, to pre-fund Postal Service retiree health benefits and moved postal retirees into Medicare. So um, there's a lot uh, that we want to talk about. Mr. DeJoy, I'm going to, again, in advance, thank you for your testimony, for your appearance here. I'm looking forward to hearing more about those things and many of the other things that many of us on this committee may not uh, be aware of. Uh, the chair and I are also charged with conducting true and meaningful oversight, so I would in, implore you to overcome the challenges that uh, you face by sharing with us as much as you can so that we might be partners in that process. I want to thank the chair and I want to yield back uh, any time that I would have remaining. Thank you. Gentleman yields